1852, a German physicist named Heinrich Gustav Magnus was trying to figure out why spinning artillery shells sometimes fly in curved, unpredictable trajectories. Arguably, one can also call the effect Robin's effect, or at least Robin's Magnus effect, as Benjamin Robbins explained long before Magnus the phenomena and principles of gunnery in 1742 investigating cannonballs. What he discovered was that a sphere or cylinder spinning in a moving airstream develops a force at a right angle to the direction of the moving air and curves away from its principal flight path. And with that, the Magnus effect was born. Presumably, Sir Isaac Newton discovered the effect first in 1672 during tennis competitions, where he was able to determine that the turn of the ball depends on the speed of rotation. Again, by Lord Rayleigh in 1877, who remarked, a rapidly rotating ball moving through the air would often deviate considerably from the vertical plane. We can still see today how important the Magnus effect is in football, baseball, golf, tennis, or even engineering. According to Newton's first law of motion, any object in motion will stay in motion, and any object at rest will remain at rest, unless acted on by a force. So how is a ball able to fly in a curved trajectory without any visible external forces? While the ball is flying and rotating, it is not only carrying air particles around it, but also meets other particles along the way, creating two zones. One zone, where incoming particles are streaming in the same direction as the rotating air of the ball, with less numbers of air molecules hitting each other. Thus, a low pressure zone is created. And another zone, where the air molecules meet, collide and create a high pressure region. The pressure difference creates a force that ultimately deflects the flight path. In baseball, it is not uncommon to change the aerodynamic properties or to reduce friction between the fingers and the ball by applying saliva to the baseball. Scratching the ball with a file or sandpaper can be a similarly effective way of messing with the trajectory. It's illegal, but one possibility. Historically, one of the most popular ways to get away with applying an illegal substance to the ball was to use a little bit of Vaseline on the inside brim of your hat in the dugout. Before pitching, players would readjust their cap and take a little bit of the substance off their thumb and apply it to the ball before pitching. The Magnus effect is not only useful to explain ball trajectories, but can even be used to change the direction of whole ships, also known as the flatnow rotor. These ships are equipped with one or more cylinders that can survive despite side winds. The interaction between the rotor surface and the wind flow creates a buoyancy force, giving a ship additional thrust. This not only saves fuel, but also reduces emissions. These rotors were developed as early as the 1920s, but did not catch on at the time due to the low price of oil. The same principle can be applied to planes with rotating cylinders, creating higher lift than conventional aircrafts, but also way higher drag. Greater environmental awareness and rising fuel prices have made this type of propulsion interesting again in recent years. The Magnus effect is a particular manifestation of Bernoulli's theorem. Fluid pressure decreases at points where the speed of the fluid increases. Bernoulli's theorem will be described in one of the next videos. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more interesting science videos.